Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Ladeo Lounge, where we are playing, or continuing to play, Final Fantasy XIV. Last episode we did um, more Ibris, and today we're going to go and do more Ibris, and hopefully finish up the Ibris uh, questline. Which involves a crap -a load of reading. I sense that you are interested in a package Sid delivered. I have every intention to apprise you of its contents. But first, I believe you should speak of Alma's condition. Do you not find her illness all too timely? Janomis and Ramza would like to believe that her bouts of vertigo are not but a result of a mind fatigued, but the answer is clear. It is the Aurasite that plagues her. Alma recently confided in me that she would hear her father speaking with the Oteus, well before even his first foray into Rabanaster. However, I do not think this is entirely true. Which is not to imply that Alma is trying to deceive us, rather, I think she saw something that led her to believe her father was conversing with the Aurasite. Moreover, I suspect it was the Aurasite itself that granted her this vision. You recall my hypothesis on distinct frequency NRR type harmonic vibrations and their tendency to promote ethereal amplification? Or when I mentioned that, despite being in the principal's possession for an extended period, the Oteus exhibited none of the imprinting presence in the Duma? No? The Oteus has never resonated with Genomis. It has always been his wife's pendant, and its Aurasite shard, the Virgo, that fueled his passion for Ivalice. No, the Oteus is bound to Alma's deepest desires, whatever those may be. The only reason I can fathom that Alma has not fallen victim to the Aurasite's grasp is that her desires are not as strong as those we have witnessed in Argath or Bagamnon, that and the ethereal interference caused by other nearby shards. I have explained all of this to Alma and recommended that she destroy the necklace, yet not only did she refuse, but she begged me to keep this revelation from her father. And so I did the only thing I could, I devised the means with which I might impede or at least lessen the effect on the, of the Odeus. This device, while still incomplete, will amplify the NRR wavelengths emitted by the Virgo. This should work to interfere with those emitted by the Odeus, thereby shielding Alma from the brunt of their effect. City below is all abuzz with word of a banga of a banga brigand loitering about the airship landing. Do you think it could be someone we know, Koopa? You know, I just have an an, an idea of something that may be happening. Ah, I see. Okay. <laughs> Alright, since I need to leave this place anyway, I will. Uh, where's the? End? I'm gonna go and fix a glamour plate for a moment. So I will be right back. Right, I have fixed my gear. Apologies, Lin, but I needed to speak with you and you alone. Oh, don't mind me, Koopa. I'll do the flooding over here in perfect air shot. What makes you think I would lay you low right here, right now? Because we're here to offer you a proposition, that's why. We need information on the Golmore jungle, and thought a man as well traveled as you might be persuaded to provide some. Golmore? You of all creatures should know that is for your land. What are you offering then? Why the opportunity to tell us what you know? Genomus believes our next adventure lies beneath a jungle canopy, Koopa. Oh, should have expected as much. Very well, Lin. Came to ask if you would meet someone. Now it seems that someone may be able to assist Genomus as well. Seeing as you and the principal did right by us before, I do not see a reason why I cannot take both of you. Have you known you are ready to depart for Robinaster? You will travel in our airship. The Fima Vista would draw too much of your unwanted attention. Back to your life of banditry in the clouds, are we? Of course not. Not that it didn't cross our minds, but when faced with the decision of what to do next, we needed simply to remember the dying words of our leader. Gijuk, Murnok, and I decided to re-enlist as Damascan Fusiliers. 
And the occupying guardians actually said yes, Koopa? Not exactly. We're now with the resistance. You know, that heard of the uprising in Damascus that followed the Dome and Liberation. And how it was crushed under the iron heel of the Fourth Legion. The resistance leaders were captured, tortured, and publicly executed. That's much of the Empire's, uh, much to the Empire's chagrin. A gruesome display only served to further rally the survivors. Remove one hut and two grow back in its place. Remove two and then there are four. A person can die, but an ideal will live on. Another exists several factions throughout Almaska. They belong to one known as Lent Steers. And when we told our commanding officer of our recent crossing with you and yours, she simply insisted that we introduce you. Me, 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 but I wasn't even supposed to be here, Koopa. Not you, hairball, her. Meet with the general and hear a proposal, then. If you're not interested, we shall return to Kungane and Hart. You have our... Hmm? Curl got your tongue. I've been asked our dead ahead, lads. This way, with many moms to cover before nightfall. Donald Ars, I bring you the Liberator. And here I thought she'd be taller. I don't really know, know her voice from the game that she's from. <laughs> so I won't be able to recreate it, but I'll just go with what I think. I knew it! A Viera! I'm Fran, proud daughter of Delmasca and General of Lent's Tears. And yes, Moogle, I am a Viera. Are you surprised? Why, yes, in fact, I am. We're kind of all supposed to be living amongst the trees, having shunned contact with the outer world, Koopa. There are supposedly a few who have left their homes, but I most certainly did not expect to see one here in the sewer. Indeed. This Banga claims to see Corban. Does he speak true? Those wounds lie deep within the Golmore jungle, the place most sacred to my sisters. They would take great offense were you to defile it with your presence. What is more, Boagie tells me you travel with guardians, openly aiding those who would see our nation burn. How can he place our trust in one who would do such? This is family defective long ago, they're not your enemy. My blade has tasted the blood of too many guardians to count. I'll go with that. And then, you know, the Empire and its people are one and the same. When you say an Imperial soldier, you're not slaying an individual, you're slaying the enemy. Your companions, Liberator, are the enemy. Despite their supposed change of hearts. You misunderstand. Kind Genomis does not approve of the Emperor's warmongering. He wants to help Dalmasca and its impoverished masses, Koopa. And what would a Mughal know of my people? Does your blood run Dalmascan red? We could cut you open and find out. General, there's no need for threats. You're right, Buggy. Then let us part lay. Parley? Parley. First, the resistance requires men, men and women from Doma and the Aeorsan Lions, to join us in ridding Dalmasca of its imperial invaders. Your past deeds have made you well known to the leaders of both. They will listen to you, or if not, they will listen to the scions to which you claim allegiance. Second, the resistance requires gold. Gold to strengthen our forces from within. 
Your allies are in bed with the East Aldenar Trading Company, which continues its dealings with Garamond even as you raise your sword against them, profiting from the Empire's rampant aggression. As targets of that aggression, I believe my people are entitled to a, prof to a portion of those profits. Grant me these simple things, and I shall personally guide you to safety. Uh, I, sh I shall personally guide you safely to the ruins of Arba. And what of the legs and tails? See me to victory, and I'll take the Emperor himself. Those are my conditions. What say you? you request a sign, but can promise more. Promise me a request. I will deliver your request, yeah, but I can't promise anything. Tell them my demands, but know that the fate of your expedition hangs on how well you do. I'd say we have a work cut out for us, Koopa. Baki, you and the first of the years are to your co company the Liberator. I expect a detailed report on how my demands are received. Yes, General. Not that I expect them to be taken seriously. You're a fool to trust them, Princess. Boom, 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 bah. What an adventure, Koopa! Just think, by tomorrow, we could all be the newest members of the Damascan Resistance. Uh, not that I'm ready to give up my place on the Prima Vista just yet. Hurry, hurry, if I don't tell someone of our adventure quick, I'll positively burst, Koopa! Welcome to the jungle! This woman asks much of us. The Vier have ever been, away, been wary of outsiders. For centuries, their many tribes have remained hidden in a jungle, content with their self-imposed solitude. Each tribe has its own strict code and will meet uh, will meet swift punishment to any who would defy these laws. As such, many of Vier will spend her entire life bound to the territory of her ancestors, both unwilling and unable to venture beyond its borders. And while the tribes are wholly independent, they have agreed to uphold a single standard. Shun all contact with the outside world, unless it is to protect the jungle. That's said, with every generation, there are those Viera who long for a life beyond the verdant sea of trees and abandon their tribes to start a new life in the kingdom cities. My guess is that this friend is one such individual. He also happens to be the only individual we know who can guide us to the monastery, Koopa. Simpson's sword arm won't be enough to see us through this predicament. She'll need to don the right mantle of a, diplo a diplomat if we're to convince the, Al the Alliances and the East Alnar Trading Company to grant us aid. What could go wrong? Yes, yes, I know you said not to call unless it was urgent, but this is urgent. Alright, not exactly, but my superiors have come to a decision on your request, and I thought you might want to hear what they had to say. Oh, and well, let me preempt any request for immediate disclosure with a reminder that the information is much too sensitive to discuss over Ring Pearl. Meet me at the Ruby Bazaar post haste, and I shall duly apprise you of their judgment. Well, Lynn, what are we waiting for? I've heard about how you united the whole of Eorzea under a single standard and convinced the Holy See to end a thousand-year conflict. Compared to that, asking for a few soldiers and a coffer of three, uh, and a coffer of three of gill should be a piece of roll and berry cake. Ah, I suppose we should inform Boagi down at Kugane Landing of our progress. You mentioned he was to keep an eye on us. Right. So much reading. So you've answered from East Alnar already. Impressive. It would seem the Lady Fraunet and the rest of the Mediterranean influence amongst the realm's prayers. I assume you have no objection to me joining you then? 
Hancock Awaits is in a bazaar. Shall we then? A lovely lady in the bunga? That here was expecting you would be alone, Lynn. Ah, uh, but excuse my manners. I am Hancock, representative of the East Ulnar Trading Company, assigned to oversee her assets here in Kugane. It is a pleasure to meet you. And I'm Yagiri. We apologize for making you come all this way. Not that it is far from the landing to... Ahem. Buggy, was it? I serve Lord Hien, rightful ruler of Doma. I have come bearing my lord's reply to your entreaty. And I am Tataritari of the Science of the Seventh Dawn. I am only here seeing as no one else could have ordered. Well, that and to bear a message from the leaders of the Eorzean Alliance. Thank you both for coming. I am Buggy, formerly of the Damascan Royal Fusiliers. I now claim allegiance to Lent's Tears, resistance group seeking to accomplish what you have in Doma and Alamigo. What tidings have you brought us? Allow me to begin, then. While the East Alnar Trading Company sympathizes with your plight, we are not in a position to grant you the funding you seek. As you are aware, the East Alnar Trading Company prides itself in its neutrality, be it in personal... I'm sorry, being the matters political or personal. And what of our relationship with yours in Alliance? Ah, yes. What I meant to say was, here in Hingashi, the East Alnar Trading Company prides itself in its neutrality. Meeting matters political and... Uh, you must understand our position. Simply supplying coin to any one group would make it appear that we somehow favor that group over another. Seeing as we conduct business openly and fairly with everyone, doing such would be sending the wrong message, and ultimately harm profits. Yes. And by selling to both sides, you maximize profits with, while good men and women perish. How convenient. We are a business, my lady. We do what we must to survive. That does not mean, however, we are blind to the needs of our customers or our allies, which is why we support the Eorzean Alliance and our noble efforts to safeguard our, their realm's freedom through a mutually beneficial arrangement. If it were my choice, I would provide your little resistance with all the funding it needs. But as my good friend Lin knows all too well, it is not my choice. Well, now that Hancock's thoroughly lowered your spirits, you won't be as crestfallen when I inform you the Eorzean Alliance will also be unable to provide any assistance. And let me guess, you did everything in power to try and convince the leaders of each city-state, only to watch as they politically declined our, pro our proposal, claiming an unfortunate lack of intelligence or resources. Wait, how did you... Lord Hien sends his greetings to you and yours, and under normal circumstances would welcome allies still suffering under the Imperial yoke. However, the word has it that the latest attempt at reclaiming your kingdom ended failure, resulting in the loss of countless lives, including many of the resistance leaders. You are not mistaken. The army is not what it once was. Those remaining would have been forced to take refuge deep beneath the streets of Robin Oster. The Fourth Legion has already defeated you once. Lacking unity and leadership, the current resistance will not survive another tilt against the Empire's disciplined ranks. 
If Doma is to join hands with Delmask as an ally, you must first prove to us that you will stand as one. Doma is a full-fledged ally would serve far better than uh, to strengthening our cause and a few temporary soldiers. Yet even if we were able to wrest Delmasca from the Empire's grasp, without unity amongst your people, the resulting chaos would prove even more perilous to the kingdom. You understand much of our situation. And based on that understanding, you would refuse your aid to Lens Tear. Am I correct? Do not mistake me. Lord Hien's refusal is but a message. A message to help you plan your next step. You have a wise master. Understands that without proper planning, driving one enemy for your midst simply creates room for the next. We the fan will know that we're pleased to hear that your response was exactly what you expected. You knew this whole time that your demands would be rejected, yet still you let this farce play out? You have my apologies, but this was all necessary to prove an important point to our leader. But if Ron needed to show the princess just exactly what she was getting herself into. And her honesty today will serve us better than any hollow promise. Thank you. Wait, what about the Goldmore Jungle? Can you believe this? We're right back to where we started. Principal Genomis will not be pleased. things I do during loading screens. Run, bitch! Run! If it is as you say, it is most unfortunate, and I suppose we did everything in our power, and that is all one could ask. I still do not understand. Why would Lady Franen send Lynn on this wild Paisa chase if she knew from the start it would be for naught? Baki mentioned something about Fran proving a point to their leader, whomever that may be. People in positions of power can prove both naive and stubborn creatures. Simply telling a leader she is wrong may not convince her of the fact. Seeing one's own plan fail, however, is often the best medicine. Naive and stubborn, and resistance is doomed. If a person that's imposing his friend is taking orders from her, then chances are this leader is even worse, Koopa. I would not be so certain, Mon Blanc. My guess is that the individual in question is still quite young and inexperienced, and that Lady Fran is trying to teach her to be an effective leader, for example. By allowing her to make her own mistakes, Fran is, getting, is granting her the ability to learn and grow from them. An experience that will ultimately benefit her when the time comes to make some truly difficult decisions. Now I seem to recall reading that one of the many faces of the Resistance before the recent quelling was a young girl of your royal blood. Do you suppose... You may cease here for your blazes with presumptions, Defector. The door was open! And you would be? I would be one. I, I would be here on orders from the leader of Lens Tears. Against my better judgment, mind you. Greetings, Lady Fran, I presume. I am Genomis Sen Lexentel, Principal of the Majestic Theatre Company. You and your colleagues are most welcome on the Prima Vista. Was it... What is it your leader would have, us, would have of us? 
While you failed in meeting even a single of our demands, she recognized that you were sincere in your attempts to see them fulfilled. And for that effort, you are to be compensated. That is most generous. The ruins which you seek are hidden behind a waterfall here, a point roughly equidistant from the river Swords and its delta. Never thanks, silly friend. You will not forget this kindness. Father, I shall plot a course immediately. Ramza, what is going on here? Alma, you should be in bed. I have slept enough, brother. Tell me, who are our guests? The priest you once again prepare a, to, a leap into dangerous spot. Keep your wits about you, Lin. When the front is strong, but then again, so has become one. Uh, if you'll excuse me. Are you mad? A trip to the surface in your condition? Listen to me, brother. The High Seraph beckons. She speaks to me through the Oteus. The what? There's no need to worry. Makoto and I have already devised a plan. I can help clear our family name. Charlene has no say in this. I am your father and I insist you remain here in the airship. What would your mother say if I allowed if I, if I allowed art to befall you? Mother? That is what it's all about, isn't it? What it's always been about. You can't about even sort of a name. No, you only seek to use the Aura to bring mother back. But you haven't been able to do that. You still do not understand how exactly it is that the shards translate one's desire into reality. That is where I can help. I can ask the High Seraph. It is she who created the Arasite. Ultima has bid me come to her place of imprisonment. If we free her, she will reveal unto us the secrets of her creations. You hear what you're saying, Alma? If there was the slightest chance of bringing Mother back, you cannot risk your life in doing so. Your brother is right. You have sacrificed too much already. I cannot bear the thought of losing you. Either of you. It is too late. Um, hello, Satan. I'm so lonely, Father. Why must you love Ramza more than you do me? Do not be cozened by your daughter's words. For they are not, they are not her own. Help me, Rams. Alma. No, no. God's for friend. I told you, no one can control the power within those shards. No one. Lin, here, take this. It might be the only thing that can save Alma, but you must hurry to the monastery. Come, we need for the Goldmore jungle, now. If I have permission to depart, Lin, everyone would be Terry here. My sister, she... Of course, Ramza. And hold on. I've set engines to full speed. It still moves as slow as always. <laughs>
Welcome to the land of my people. It would be a poor life, I said I did not miss it, so. Alma! Ramza, help me. Alma! <laughs> Be gone. Oh, my Ramza. Blood of the Invokers, fulfill the ancient covenant and grant unto me the vessel promised. What's just... Bagi, to me. The girl is not well. Uh, might I suggest we continue this back at the Prima Vista, Koopa? Have you the courage to face true evil? What are you gapping at? The ship is this way, Cooper. Ramza is gone, oh, tears, Tia. What have I done? What have I done? We need to do something, but what recourse is left to us? The only means we had of protecting ourselves could not even prevent my son from. Oh, my son from. I'm sorry, Janomis. My design was flawed. Not necessarily, Charlie. We all saw how it successfully uh, how it succeeded in drawing Alma back from the rift, and shattering the odious, the loss of the boy is not yours to bear. Our focus here should not be on our failures, but what we have learned from them. The being uh, beyond the rift it spoke before claiming Ramza, referred to you as the blood of its invokers. Could it be your ancestors are responsible for Ultima summoning? M most certainly not. I have discovered no in such interference anywhere in the Dorai papers. Besides, tales of the High Seraph existed far before even the earliest of Ivory Seed legends. Then who exactly did summon Ultima? And why does she think them your kin? Look! I have a bad feeling about this, Koopa. Secret Echo. <laughs> Secret Echo. Ramza dead? You lie about as well as you carry yourself in battle, Orn. I did not say he was dead, my lord Alida, merely that he had abandoned he had abandoned his mortal vessel, entrusting his ethereal soul to the Orosite. But why would they do such a thing? Peace has finally come to Ivoris. There's not to be done from further sacrifice. 
Kingdom is one, and his victory is as much as uh, his as it is mine. He risked life and limb to shield me from the dark. That would have made that would have would have seen me perish. I think whatever. Without him, I would not be standing here before you. It is my duty as both king and colleague to see him faced, uh, saved. <laughs> what? <laughs> Can't fucking speak. Nice to me. We ride for our bon. My lord, wait. Ayora Glabodos, first of the Zodiac Braves, was not the hero the church would have you believe. He betrayed Mother Hydaelyn for the promise of coin and power, summoning forth the terrible evil from the depths of the celestial abyss. It was believed only one of the lands chosen, only a warrior of light, might stand against his threat. Yet while victorious in battle, Ramza was unable to see the darkness vanquished. If failure was all that awaited our warrior of light, on what chance do you presume any other might stand? Are you saying I should do nothing then? No, my lord. Ramza is. My brother's final wish where he, uh, before he surrendered to the ether was that his name be struck from the annals of history. Alma, you're unhurt, but I was led to believe none but Oren returned from Arbonne. What is this you speak of your brother's wishes? When it became apparent that we were powerless to truly defeat the High Seraph, we chose the only path left to us. To do what Heidelin herself did countless centuries past. Imprison Ultima. And as you are aware, my lord, a prison is only as strong as the seal on its gates. Ramta sacrificed his body to ensure that the Angel of Blood would never again walk the land. And he believed that if people knew of this, sac of his, of this sacrifice, it would only inspire them to seek out the Holy Stones and repeat the mistakes of those come before. If you truly avouch yourself his friend... Then you will honor him. Then you will honor this, his final plea. No, Ramja should not be forgotten. He should be raised up as a hero for his deeds and claim his rightful place at my side. Only he might be my, only he might be my knight gallant. He is gone, my lord. Before Ramza was your friend, before he was my brother, he was a warrior of light. He did what he did for Hydaelyn, and for those who would one day too heed the crystal's call. Claim the throne, my friend. Become ruler of Ivalice. And restore peace to this war torn la war, war torn realm once and for all. Wait, Ramta, don't leave me, please, I beg of you. You will make a fine and just king, Delita. So you do not stray from that path. Ramza. The stones in these two necklaces, you are certain they will guide the heroes of a new era to Ramza? Tis what Ramza wished, my lord. Oren, I do not believe I can bear another farewell this day. Will you not reconsider, reconsider my offer to remain as a member of my court? It is but a matter of time before the Cardinal and his Temple Knights grow wise to my past. I would not have my presence here implicate you as well. Ramba beseeched me, strike his name from history. But like you, my lord, I could not bear the thought of future generations blind to the truth. As such, I pent this chronicle of the hero's journeys. 
I fear the world, however, is not yet ready for the gospel contained within these pages, nor would the church ever allow its circulation. In fact, I believe they will confiscate every existing copy and lock them away in their library. And what better way for the words to remain forever preserved than in one of the most highly guarded faults in all the realm? And then one day, when a church has, fought, when a church has fallen out of favour, the chronicle will be discovered and truth shall, be, truth, truth shall prevail. Yeah. I must admit your plan is intriguing, Orn. But the church learn. Uh, but once the church learns, it was you who penned the chronicle. Your life. No cutscene? Yes. <laughs> cutscene after cutscene after cutscene after cutscene. Please let me play. Lynn. It was the echo, wasn't it? Removal of Ramza's name from the history books and the rye papers. The pendants. But it's all set in motion by Oran himself. And if the Liberator's visions are to be taken as facts... It also appears we now know what the High Seraph meant by blood of my invoker. She is not speaking of ancestors in the sense of actual kin, but the line of those chosen by Hydalin to serve her as warrior of, warriors of light. But then why abduct Ramza or even Alma, unless there is something you haven't been telling us? She's using us to lure Lin. It is her vessel the High Seraph desires. Matron Steeds! Alma, how long have you been awake? Ah, I've been a fool. I told our leader that it did not matter if our request for her aid was refused, for I had an, alter al an alternative ploy. General! It's all right, Boggy. My intention was to claim one of these Aurasites in the name of the Resistance and use its power to lay waste to the Guardian occupants. Only now do I realize how flawed my ambitions were. You mean this whole time you were playing us for fools? Why didn't we see it earlier? Never just a woman with ears longer than mine, I always say. You have a right to be angry and apologize for misleading you. But believe me, I no longer have any desire to deceive you and yours. I shall see you to the Orbon Monastery, and ask not in return, but that you let me join you in your rescue of Ramza. Do not mis misunderstand me. I did not do this for any of you, any one of you. I do it for people both in both Golmore and Rebanaster, people who may die if this high surf is allowed to return to power. And I think that's going to unlock the Urban Monastery. Okay. <laughs> Alright. So, my friends, this is going to be the end of the episode. I hope you enjoyed this episode of just, oh, I was playing Final Fantasy XIV. The next episode, we're going to go... It's not just Fred's Sunday Lounge. Uh, next episode, we're going to go and... Uh, run the Urban Monastery, but as a tank. Because I want to get a piece of tank here and hope that it drops. You know. Anyway, goodbye. <laughs>